Who is the greatest UFC fighter of all time? This is certainly a tough question to answer, one that many YouTubers have tried to conquer, but that is what I'm doing here today to answer. I have created an ELO engine, like chess, to figure out who is the greatest UFC fighter of all time. Before I get into this more, I want to thank Mr. V's Garage for this idea. He makes Formula One content, and he does he did the same thing for Formula One to figure out who is the greatest driver. If you're into Formula One stuff, I definitely recommend him. Go check him out. He's a fantastic creator. Love that guy. So what is an ELO rating system? I'm sure most of you are familiar with chess.com or even something like Pokemon Showdown, but it is a method of calculating the skill level of each player. Good chess players have a higher ELO and bad chess players have a lower ELO. Same thing here translates to my UFC version. The better fighters will have a higher ELO and worse fighters slash journeymen will have a lower ELO. And then from there we could just take a look at who has the highest ELO and determine that's our greatest of all time. Simple enough. So how is this going to work? The system I'm going to create takes in a fight from the UFC and will shift fighters up or down, depending on if they won their fight. I will get into the case of a draw or no contest later, I figure it, you know, it makes more sense to explain it at a later point. Anyways though, as with any ELO system, if a fighter beats another fighter with a much higher ELO, they get more points. And then on the other side of the coin, if the higher rated fighter beats the lower rated one, the lower rated one won't lose as much, because that's what was expected to happen. And anyways, yeah, that's pretty much the theory behind it. Time to learn the actual math for it. So these formulas that are used, they may look scary, but trust me, they aren't actually all that bad. Oof, I feel I may have scared off the average UFC fan showing a formula, but oh well, here we go. Basically each fighter, fighter A and B, will put points up to a pot, similar to poker, to a value known as K. K can be anything like 1, 2, 4, whatever. Chess.com uses a K value of 16, which is why you generally go up around like 8 ELO. For my project, I'll be using a K value of 40. We then get to the expected score, which is the probability that a fighter will win based on their current rating relative to their opponent's rating. It's a value between 0 and 1 and represents the predicted outcome. The expected score for fighter A is calculated using the formula shown where the R sub A and B are the ratings for fighters A and B. A win is scored as 1, or 100% of the points, a draw is 0.5, half the points, and a loss is 0% of the points. Obviously in the UFC there's also no contests, uh, so for the instance of a no contest between fighters, each fighter will just get the points they put into the pot. Suppose player A, again with rating R sub A, was expected to score E sub A points, but actually scored S sub A points. The formula for updating that player's rating is right here on the screen. The higher rated fighter will risk more points because they have a higher expectancy to win, and the lower rated fighter will risk less points because their expectancy to win is, well, not as high. For initial ratings, fighters who are fighting in the UFC for the very first time, we will give them all a rating of 1000. It's just a nice number, it doesn't really matter too much, and yeah, I guess there we go. The math is sorted, we can add it to our code if we want, and understand what's happening, and we can move on. Now that we have that sorted, it's time to actually get our data, and oh boy, we need every result starting from UFC 1. Thankfully, the UFC did part of this hard work, and as on UFCstats.com, they have every single event with every single result ever. To get the data from UFCstats.com, I had to make a web scraper to scrape it, and admittedly, I'm not very good at web scraping. This was my second time doing it, and I definitely used ChatGPT to help me refine it, but you know, it's fine. I eventually got my large data set with every result that I need, so I guess it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. To break down this data set a little more, Fighter 1 is the slot of the fighter that wins, and Fighter 2 is the slot of the fighter that loses. In the event of the draw, I guess that doesn't really matter, but the results column says draw, and then with a no contest, the results column will say no contest. And uh, yeah, looks like we have everything. Time to clean up the data a bit and then go from there. Just one more thing to note that my data goes up to Noche Night, so if this video doesn't get uploaded before Saturday, frick off. And alright, let's do this. After 31 years of the UFC, the highest ELO achieved was a great 1,317.72, making the greatest UFC fighter to ever live be... The greatest fighter to ever live is fucking John Jones. The highest ELO we ended up being was John Jones. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess this shouldn't be a surprise. He's in many people's books the greatest UFC fighter of all time. He's been in the UFC since 2008. He only has one official loss, one no contest, 27 wins. This guy, I mean, he's just had an incredible career to say the least. So I guess, yeah, there's our GOAT. John Jones is our GOAT with the highest ELO. 
so moving on from the number one spot to round out the top three because i find it hel very hilarious actually at number two we have the next highest elo of 1298.36 with that being george st pierre another great fighter i would say definitely worthy of the number two spot but this is where i find it funny in our third spot with an elo of 1268.8 islam makachev what i know i was pretty surprised too over, you know, Anderson Silva, Demetrius Johnson, even Khabib? Khabib actually comes in fifth, but he's behind Max Holloway, which is also very fascinating to me. Demetrius Johnson is at the 12th highest spot, fair, you know, he was in flyweight, so, you know, I guess it makes sense. But what about Anderson Silva, 136th, barely beating out Alistar Overeem, crazy stuff to be honest. But then again, the ELO engine takes in every win and loss. He gained a lot of ELO initially and beat a lot of great people. But he still kept fighting way past his prime. He would lose a lot towards the end of his career, so that's why he's in this spot. We've been looking at the top a lot, but there is always an end to a list. The end of the list being at a whopping 899.94. The legend himself, Chase Sherman. A true UFC journeyman with only 4 wins in the UFC and 11 losses. I apologize Chase if you see this video. You still made it to the UFC and did what a lot of us can only dream of doing, but you are the only fighter below 900 elo so before i talk about my conclusions uh, i want to talk about a few fighters elo i find really interesting one of these cases being one of my favorite rivalries right now of alex Pereira and israel adesanya before i reveal their elos comment down below your guesses at 1160.28 lies israel adesanya and only separated by 0 0.01 at 1160.29 elo lies alex Pereira. I couldn't have written that better myself. I just find it so fascinating that the two are not only connected so much in real life and have so many fights, but they also would only be separated by .01. But then again, I guess that answers the question of who is better between the two? Another thing I find really funny is directly above Alex Pereira at 1161.27 is Sean Strickland. Uh, Drickus Duplessis is also above all three of them. Uh, he's at 1177.09. So I guess if you're to rank middleweights all time, there you go. I think on that note, I can conclude two things. And for the first one, Drickus is a perfect example. While he does not have too many fights in the UFC, he's beating guys who are falling out of their prime and already have a really high ELO rating. I mean, Israel, of course, is a dog, with no pun intended, of course, but he's also probably out of his prime now at 35 years old. That's when a lot of fighters begin to slow down. Drikus was at 1,155.28, who fought Israel, who was at 1,181.79 at the time. And, of course, Drikus won, gaining him 26 ELO points. That's pretty wild to me. The other conclusion I've come to is that the ELO engine awards consistency over a long stretch of time. Being in the UFC for longer also helps you gain a lot of ELO. I mean, it makes sense. John Jones is obviously the perfect example, being there since 2008 through 2024. But Ryan Bader is actually a very interesting example who's in the top 30 fighters. He had an 8-year career, and he was consistent enough to gain lots of ELO over time. He still ranks above Shevchenko, Colby Covington, Strickland, Adesanya, Pereira, Arnold Allen, and many, many more. Anyways, I'm not sure how long this upload was going to be, but I want to thank everyone for watching this video. I know this channel is primarily gaming, primarily Minecraft and all that stuff, but this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while and spent a lot of, you know, a good amount of time coding and figuring out how to do stuff. Uh, but please leave a like and subscribe. If you want to see where your favorite fighters are, the link to the GitHub will be below. Thank you guys.